In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to name amides. So let's start with a very simple example, a two carbon amide. So two carbons is associated with the name ethane. But when dealing with amides, you need to drop the E and add the word amide. So this is called ethanamide. The common name for this is acetamide. You might see that in your oral textbooks. Now let's work on some other examples. So based on our last example, what is the IUPAC name for this particular amide? So we have a total of three carbons, which is associated with the word propane, but we're going to drop off the E and add amide. So this is called propanamide. Now let's move on to our next example. How would you name that particular amide? By the way, this is a primary amide because the nitrogen atom is only attached to one carbon. Now we have a total of five carbons in the parent chain. So instead of saying pentane, we're going to have pentanamide. So drop off the E and then add the word amide. So pentanamide. And we have a methyl group on carbon 2. Therefore, this is going to be called 2-methyl pentanamide. Now for our next example, we're going to have a methyl group attached to the nitrogen atom. So feel free to pause the video if you want to try naming uh, this molecule. So first, what type of amide do we have? Is this a primary amide, a secondary amide, or a tertiary amide? The nitrogen atom is attached to two carbon atoms. So therefore, we have a secondary amide. Now let's count the longest chain that's associated with the amide. So we have a four carbon chain and so instead of saying butane, let's drop off the E and replace it with amide. So we have butanamide. Now we have a methyl group on carbon 3. So that's going to be 3-methyl. And we also have a methyl group attached to the nitrogen atom. So that's going to be called N-methyl. And so since we have two methyl groups, we need to say dimethyl. So this is going to be N, 3 we need to put the letter before the number, dash, dimethyl butanamide. If you're unsure about the name, you could look this up in the internet. If you type in N3-dimethyl butanamide, you'll get this structure. Now let's move on to our next example. So in this example, we have a tertiary amide. The nitrogen atom is attached to three carbon atoms. So go ahead and name this amide. So let's count the longest chain. It's a six carbon chain. So instead of saying hexane, we're going to replace the E with an amide. So we have hexanamide. Now we have two ethyl groups on the nitrogen atom. So it's going to be N comma N dash diethyl hexanamide. Now let's look at some other examples. Go ahead and try this one. So we have a tertiary amide with different things attached to it. So once again, we're going to start by counting the longest chain of the amide. So we have a seven carbon chain. So instead of saying heptane, replace the E with amide, so heptanamide. And now we have a methyl group on the nitrogen and an ethyl group. So ethyl comes before methyl. Therefore, it's going to be N-ethyl-N-methyl because both of those groups are attached to the nitrogen atom. 
and then heptanamide. So that's how we can name uh, that molecule. Now what about this one? Let's say if we have a cyclohexane ring with an amide functional group attached to it. What is the name of that molecule? So this is going to be cyclohexane and then carboxamide. Now let's draw something similar. A six carbon ring with an amide, but instead of a cyclohexane ring, let's use benzene. So what's the name for that? So we have a benzene group and an amide group attached to it. So this is called benzamide. Now let's move on to our next example. So we're going to have a benzene ring. And just like before, we're going to have an amide functional group. But this time, we're going to have a methyl on the nitrogen and on the benzene ring, which I'm going to put on this side. So go ahead and name that molecule. So because we have a methyl on the nitrogen, that's going to be an N-methyl. And we have a methyl on the benzene ring. So this is carbon-1 with the amide. This has to be carbon-2. So we have a 2-methyl group. And when you have a benzene ring with the amide functional group, we know that the parent name is going to be benzamide. So let's put this together. So this is going to be N, 2 dimethyl, since we have 2-methyl groups, and then benzamide. And so that's the name for that molecule, N, 2 dimethyl benzamide. In the next example, we're going to have two benzene rings this time. So we have a benzene ring attached to the nitrogen atom and to the carbonyl group. So how can we name it? So let's break it down. The benzene ring that's attached to the nitrogen, that's called N-phenyl. Phenyl contains six carbons. Benzo contains seven. Now the benzene ring that's attached to the carbonyl group, including the nitrogen, so basically all of this, that is benzamide. So it's the benzene ring with the amide. So putting this together, this gives us N-phenyl benzamide or benzamide. Now let's work on a more complicated example. And so we're going to have a cyclohexane ring attached to the nitrogen atom and at the same time a benzene ring attached to it as well and a substituent on a parent chain. So go ahead and pause the video and work on that example. So let's start with the longest chain. So we have a total of eight carbons. So instead of saying octane, we're going to take out the E and add amide. Now we have a bromine on carbon four. So that's a four bromo group. And then we have a cyclohexane ring attached to the nitrogen. So that's going to be N cyclohexyl. And then a benzene ring attached to the nitrogen. If the benzene ring is attached to the nitrogen, it's phenyl. If you have the benzene ring attached to the carbonyl part, that's going to be seven carbons. So then that's going to be benzamide. But we don't have benzamide in this example. So we have an N-phenyl. Now we need to put it in alphabetical order. So bromo comes before cyclohexyl, which comes before phenyl. So putting it all together, this is going to be 4-bromo and then N-cyclohexyl dash 
n dash phenyl octanamide. And so that's it for this example. N bromo, I mean four bromo, N cyclohexo, N phenyl octanamide. Now for the last example, we're going to have two amide functional groups attached to this molecule. So how can we name it? Well, this is carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It really doesn't matter which way we count it. It's still going to be the same. So we have a hexane carbon chain, and we have two amide groups, so diamide. This is going to be called hexane diamide. And so that's it for this video. Hopefully it gave you a good introduction into naming amides. Thanks for watching.